get started. The Running Board of Education meeting is called to order. The Board of Education is in compliance with Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975, entitled the Open Public Meetings Act. The time, date, and location of this meeting was appropriately advertised by notifying the retrospect as well as posting notices in the Barrow Hall, Runnymede Post Office, Mary Bold School, the Lyon Bingham School, Grace Downing School, and Runnymede Public School District website. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. <coughs> Ms. Adair? Here. Ms. Anderson? Here. Ms. Beebe's absent. Mr. Buckheim? Here. Ms. Davidson's absent, Ms. Farrier's absent, Mr. Padliaz is absent, Ms. Panzarella? She's absent. I mean, here. <laughs> Ms. Walden? Here. She's absent. We have a quorum. Thank you. Also present, Mark Iannucci, Superintendent of Student. <coughs> Sean McCann, Business Administrator, Supervisor of Curriculum Instruction. This is Jade Yezzy, Principal of Bingham Downing School. Mr. Steve Peely, Principal of Mary Bold School. Mr. Phil Silva, Vice Principal of Mary Bold School. Ms. Gladys Hubbard, Child, Seen Child Study Team Supervisor. Sorry, Mr. Hines said something. All right. He's not feeling well, I guess. At this time, I need a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes from November 15th. I make a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes from November 15th. I'll second. Motion made by Maria, seconded by Patty. Any questions? Uh -huh. Roll call. Mrs. Dare? Yes. Ms. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Buckheim? Yes. Ms. Benzarello? Yes. Ms. Baldwin? Yes. Motion passes. At this time, I also need a motion to approve the financial report period ending November 2016. I'll make a motion to approve the financial report ending November, November 2016. <laughs> Sorry. Seconded by Chaz. Roll call. Ms. Adair? Yes. Ms. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Buckheim? Yes. Ms. Pizzarella? Yes. Ms. Spaulding? Yes. <clears throat> Okay. Budget, audit. I mean, so I want to go into our audit. Um, Mr. Calavita, our school auditor, was unable to make it. So um, he sat down with myself, Mr. Arnucci, and Mr. Buckheim was also able to sit in for that. Um, for this year's audit, this is now my third year going through the audit with the school district. So over the past three years, we've kind of been working through different things and many times, grants and things like that that might have happened three, four, five years prior, don't get closed up immediately. Um, Going through this audit, there was only one thing that they pointed out within the entire audit, and it dealt with our food service. Um, since taking over food service, we've been pulling more money in from our food service account that acts as an outside company that we have to make sure that we just don't keep money in that account. The one reason why you are permitted to keep money in that account is if it's earmarked for something specific. <coughs> one thing that we are looking at is upgrading HVAC or adding HVAC the Vols all-purpose all room, which is a, our cafeteria that's over here. Um, the cost of that has not met where we currently are with revenue coming in. Um, however, it exceeded the amount that we are supposed to have, but since it's earmarked, it isn't something that is um, a negative, but it's something that the auditors want to make sure that the board is aware of, which is why it's an audit recommendation for um, this year that will be approved in, under the finance section of the agenda for this evening. Um, looking at the audit overall, there's three main areas for the audit, the financial area, the compliance, and then internal controls. So the auditors come in for a two weeks straight, but then throughout the course of the year we're sending them different reports that we submit. They're cross-checking everything, making sure that all the reports line up, and that we are reporting things correctly as a district. Um, a big piece of that is making sure that our departments communicate what's going on. Um, special education, Ms. Hubbard's been huge in terms of making sure that we know every student, how students are classified, how teachers are classified in terms of their teaching assignments. So those are all different things that we have cleaned up over time. Um, Mr. Calavita said positive things, I'll let Mr. Buckheim speak as well in terms of what he heard. In terms of our excess surplus, our excess surplus for this year is 803,000. One of the reasons why it's 803,000 is because we had budgeted money last year for projects throughout the district. In prior board meetings, I had stated that we were holding off on those projects because of the roofing projects and the windows and door projects that we had done. Um, we have not received back yet the state share funding. We're making progress. Actually, this week, I was in talks with the Department of Edu um, 
the SDA, and we are hoping that we will be receiving at least 65% completion status, which is a good portion, the majority portion of that money that we're waiting on. The fact that we had money available in our reserve accounts allowed us to pay those bills, so that way vendors weren't waiting. School districts that weren't able to pay the bills currently are in lawsuits because vendors weren't paid, so they're now suing the district for money that the districts don't have. Because in order to get a grant, you're only expected to show your local share. They don't ask for the whole amount. So the fact that we had our local share, plus we had money in reserves to cover the state amount also, allowed us to pay those bills and not incur additional legal fees or um, and not have any <coughs> vendors waiting out for the work that had been completed. Um, so technically, when, when I present this year's budget for 1718, you will see $500,000 allotted to projects, which we already allotted for in this budget, but aren't going to be spending due to the fact that we don't have the money in the banks as we speak. This is looking at it from an auditing accounting perspective as far as where the money is. So on paper, it looks like the money's there. However, unfortunately, basically we had to use that money to make sure that we didn't incur other debts for the district. Mr. Buckham, is there anything you wanted to add um, from the meeting? Uh, just that uh, having previously sat on the, uh, the regional board for two terms and having gone through the audit process there, and also as an administrator in the school district, uh, I would, had witnessed uh, several uh, concerns with those budgets when they were audited. And the fact that we had this one mi minute item uh, <coughs> told me how hard Sean and his staff work in making sure that we are using the money uh, effectively and adhering to all guidelines and rules and regulations. Uh, and I think uh, Dr. McCarran did an outstanding job and his, his entire team, so thank you. Make sure you thank, thank you. everyone thank for you. our team. Because <coughs> um, previously here we ran into, we were, we were running into some issues as well. So thank you, Dr. McCarran. Make sure you tell all the girls thank you as well. All right, next up we have, um, Mr. Silver, Mr. Peely, we have some bold students here. All right, so one of our school and district goals this year was to incorporate more civic engagement in our character ed program. So today we have Ms. Smith and three student members of our community service team. They're going to let you know a little bit about um, our recent canned food project, the activities that led up to it, and how it was tied to our curriculum. Okay, well, good evening. Um, I'm Samantha Smith. I'm a teacher here at Bowles. And like Mr. Silva said, um, one of our goals for this year was to raise awareness of and participation in the community with community service. So we formed a community service committee, um, and our intention was to have two student representatives per homeroom. So we put out an interest survey, and we actually got 137 students that were interested, which was awesome. So because of that, we decided to make the projects more grade level specific. Um, and this past month, the month of December, uh, the eighth graders took on a project to collect um, canned food and box food for a local church's um, food pantry. And so last Friday, we went to all three schools and we picked up um, more than 25 bags of food and we delivered it to the food pantry. And just really need to see how thrilled and excited the volunteers were and how excited the students were also. Um, some of the other projects we have planned for this year, we're gonna collect items for a local animal shelter, we're gonna write cards for um, children at uh, Ronald McDonald House, and also hosting a get-together for senior citizens. We're really excited about that. Um, our first student that will be talking is Jackie Willetta, and she's gonna be talking about the um, flyer portion of the plan food drive. In technology class, everywhere from 6th grade to 34, and the competition for the best life. We had two weeks to complete and submit it to Mr. Gordy, <coughs> and he picked the top ten. The rest of the staff members were really their favorites. Okay, and now Haley Lyons will come up and talk about actually collecting the cans and the boxes of food. From November 28th to December 15th, the Hawks Community Service Corps went to all of the classes in Marion School to collect cans every Friday. After they were collected, they were checked for expiration dates. On December 16th, the Hawks Community Service Court went to Bingham and Downing Elementary Schools to collect their cans. When all cans were collected, we brought them to the Trinity Lutheran Church. Church. Everyone was asked to sort out the cans to make it easier for them to give out to the families. Thank you to 
to Bingham, Downing, and Mary Old School for donating cans to make everybody, everyone's holiday a better one. Okay, and lastly we have Jack Capatos, and he'll be talking about the meaning of community service. The meaning of community service is to give back to the community, and the way we did that was by giving cans, and as she said, it was like 25 bags of cans, and they're mostly full, and it means a lot to the people that we gave it to, because as you went, if you saw the faces of the people there, they really felt warm that we gave so much back to them. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Yeah. A lot of our families, believe it or not, I know that a lot of us don't know that, like, think about this, but a lot of our, like, people that we live with here in Runnymede go there on a weekly basis to get some, um, to get some food to eat during the week. So you guys did something really awesome. So thank you. I hope you guys keep it up. I have a question. I have a question. Yeah. Okay. Are you thinking of possibly sometime during your project of uh, maybe collecting clothing uh, yeah, to help are, families out? Definitely. That shoes, is one of the things coat. in terms of shoe drive. Um, there's a variety of things. We haven't really pinned them down for each month yet, but yes, that was one of them. Okay. Thank you. I was just going to say that I wrote some notes down here for Mr. Andrew to give to you, and I'll write my email address down too, because so, so, I am in charge of student council at Triton, and I'm, we're, we're all of us here on this board are active and very in all different um, community prod like service organizations here in town, and we can like hook you up with some people that might really be able to okay. keep you. keep this going because it's really important that our kids become productive members of <coughs> our town. So thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> At this time, we're open for public comment on agenda items only. Anybody have any questions on agenda items at this time? No? Okay, then our Secretary of Curriculum Board, do you have anything to add or say uh, publicly, Mr. Dr. McCarran? Um, no, the big thing was our um, handling of the rhyme grants and how we're currently in the process of doing that, and then constant communication with the state um, in order to try to get updates as quickly as possible, and also get our funding. Um, all things have been submitted before and after care has been working out great. Um, later in the year, we're going to be talking about summer programming um, as a part of our before and after care and how that will look for this upcoming summer. Um, but no, other than that, we're preparing for state testing, and we're also looking at e-books for social studies and science in the middle grades that will tie in with our discovery education that we currently have. <coughs> What's the difference between e-books and Chromebooks? Well, the e-book, it's, it's, it, it's a textbook online. So it provides students with more interaction and things like that to work in their classes and also the assignments um, through their Chromebooks, okay. so make it available. And then we would use that in addition to our current textbooks. I'm sorry, Ms. Mazzarella was saying, and then they <laughs> and come then to they us because trying. we don't have that, but we are in the process of getting to that. So. When Gregory's a senior, Dr. McCarran will get them. <laughs> <laughs> but at least we'll have that. No, All sorry. right, superintendent's <laughs> report. Just a couple things. District enrollment is still steady, 864 students. Um, a lot of these events happened in the last couple of weeks. Our holiday committee did a great job of organizing the Thanksgiving meals going out as well as the um, gift giving this time of year. We're uh, sending some stuff out at the end of the week. A couple of the holiday concert, I know Patty was there, Jazz was there. It was there. excellent. Yes. I love the bells, the chimes. That yeah. is cool. Yeah. Oh, oh, awesome. did a great job. Uh, Ms. Maji and Ms. Engelhart um, did a wonderful job. If you've seen the numbers, have just increased every year. That music foundation also does a great job for raising money throughout the years. So kids are missing with me for hours. Hours. <laughs> hours. <laughs> Two days. They've done a lot of different things. I know they, last week they sang at the the Rumpson House for the seniors. Uh, they also went down to my city again, so it's, it's a really great thing. It's great. Uh, they, I know the basketball team both played last week over at Triton. Um, I was unable to attend. My, my kids had their conferences last week on that night, so I know there's a lot of people there. Um, our budget is 
budget preparation. Now that we're closing out 2016, our budget preparation started with the 16th. The 17 18 school year. Um, so we met as an administrative team, we've got the things we're going to need for next year. So that will be we'll be hearing that we're coming by in March, right? We'll start the uh, February presentation. Uh, the two things, I, two main things I attend in the last month or so since I saw you last, I attended the um, my curriculum and instruction slash PD seminar committee that I'm involved with with the county. Um, we talked about the changes coming from student teaching, the proposing changes to be implemented. Finally, by the 2019-2020 school year, where student teaching would increase to the entire school year. So the teachers would start, the students would start in September, and that would go all the way through probably the end of May. Uh, there are pros and cons for it. There was a nice heat discussion. Healthy discussion, I shouldn't say heated. Uh, there are the pros and cons for that. So I'll try to keep you updated on that. Um, plus the Ed TPI is also a test requirement students will have to so It's going to be a little different. So we'll try to keep you abreast of that. I also have an opportunity to go to the School Board Sustainable Practices Workshop back in early December. Um, and that was one of our district goals uh, to be a sustainable school that I believe in the five years. Got the ball rolling on that. It was a great workshop. We met, I met the following week with Patty and Chaz, members of the Green Team, administrative team as well. And that was a great meeting. So we do a lot of things already, I think, to get that certification done. And Dr. McCarran and I discussed it. So I know we're going to present the, uh, submit our application <coughs> mid, mid January. And want some more information on the green team is going to that same workshop up in Trenton as a team. Mm -hmm. I was up there by myself, so when they bombard you all this information, I could only keep up for so long. Uh, most of the district green teams. But our green team will go, and I'm proud of you, going as well. So we'll have some more information on that, but the application will be submitted in January. Other than that, I don't have anything else but to wish everybody happy holidays. Hey, can I go back to the concert? Sure. I just want to say thank you to one other person. I think Mr. Silva did a great job. That night, uh, getting it started, you know, in, you know to, with the parents and kicking the concert off and making sure everyone had, had what they needed. So, thank you. you. Did a great job. Thank you. All right. Um, there's all other reports are attached the principal's reports, nurses' reports, special ed, Bill Dean Browns. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, PTA report, I don't think there's much. Um, uh, Camden County Ed Services, I need to go to a meeting in January. Um, but it's on Wednesday night and everyone knows I work Wednesday night, so maybe I'll do a phone conference. Um, NJSPA? Yes. Uh, I, as your delegate, I attended the uh, delegate assembly meeting up in Mercer County. There was only one resolution that we discussed that was voted on. Uh, the, the way the New Jersey law is right now is if a child and the family goes through an evaluation, a child safety evaluation, and the family does not agree with the summary of the report and what the recommendations are, uh, they can basically uh, get an attorney and fight the decision, and the school district has to pay all legal bills. Uh, we had a resolution come in from one of the school districts, Board of Ed, saying that uh, the burden, as far as financial burden, if that happens, should be on the shoulders of the party that is in disagreement with the outcome. Um, there was some heated discussion about this resolution because uh, some, uh, some points that were being made from board members were they're from a poor school district, and if a family doesn't agree with what the Child Study King has recommended, they really don't have the financial means to pursue it legally. Uh, they were corrected by New Jersey School Board's attorney who stated that uh, there are advocacy groups out there that will f support and, and provide them with the legal advice that they need and attorneys that they need at no cost. So that resolution was that the New Jersey School Board Association believes that the burden of proof and the burden of production or cost in a special education dispute should be placed on the party that's initiating the litigation. That resolution was approved. Uh, now it goes through NJ BSA to Trenton to discuss it with the State Board of Education, obviously the governor, and so forth, uh, in hopes of changing that law. But that resolution was approved, was supported by 80% of the 
delegates who were there. I think we had about 140 or 150 delegates there, so 80% of them was in favor, so therefore the resolution did pass. So that's that. Um, I did not make the, uh, the planning board then zoning meeting on the 14th because I was at the basketball games to watch our teams. However, uh, I'm very fortunate that Mr. Alkali, who lives on my street, who sits on the board, and I explained the situation, I, and he said, you know, he would catch up to me, which he did. Uh, there were only three items really on their agenda, uh, and I'm glad the mayor's here in case I make a mistake. He could, he could correct me. But uh, the three items that were discussed, uh, there is a uh, gentleman uh, that wants to start a boxing facility, um, and that they did not move on that because the application was not complete. So I would imagine I will be able to make January's meeting. Maybe it'll be coming back in January when whatever was missing on that application is taken care of. It's a pretty neat idea. We the Bakhti uh, Abdi Laundra Matt O'Connor's Bridge Road project. Give some young men and women that want to learn to box. I know when I was the principal of Camden County Vocational School, we had a young man from Camden that was a uh, national AAU boxing champion in his weight class. Uh, was a wonderful young man. And actually went on to box professionally. So. It's, it's, it's a good home. idea. Uh, the other item that came up is the Wawa. One of the Black Horse Pike here around me uh, wants to install a shed behind a building to store some some material, shovels, rock salt, things like that. Uh, when the new when the Wawa was re-designed uh, inside, they lost some storage space, and I believe that was approved. Yes. Mayor, correct. Thank you. Thank you. And then the last thing is on Harding Avenue, there was a small business uh, that worked in the copying business, selling copiers toner, etc. That business hasn't functioned in a couple of years. Uh, I believe the husband and wife that had the business, the husband passed away, and the mom is passing the building on to her, one of her children to become a residency. So it's, it's going to go from what it used to be a business to become a home for someone to live in. And I believe, Mayor, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, I believe that those were the items on the agenda that evening. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. I went um, to the mayor council meeting as usual, and I'm just so thrilled to say how wonderful everything is in town. No, three officers seriously were presented. You were there too this month. Three officers were presented with um, an award. Council meeting. Right. If people, want to go to, if people want to know what's happening in the community, go to the, they can go to the council meeting. Wasn't it informative? Yes. It was well, wonderful. It was. I, I, I thought it was, it was a great night. Come on. It's always, it's always a great. It's always a great night. Trust me. <laughs> All right. Uh, Black Horse Bike Regional and negotiations, um, I don't believe that we have anything for. So we'll move on to new business. I need a motion if, um, for items number one and two, use of facility and field trips. Oh, make that motion. Motion made by Chaz, seconded by Patty. Any questions? Roll call. Mrs. Dare? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Buckhan? Yes. Ms. Panzarella? Yes. Ms. Baldwin? Yes. Motion passes. Under personnel, we need a motion to approve item <coughs> number one to seven. I make a motion to approve item one to seven. Thank you. Maria made the motion. I need a second. I'll second. Second made by Patty. Roll call. Ms. Spalding? Yes. Ms. Panzarella? Yes. Ms. Shabaka? Yes. Ms. Anderson? Yes. Ms. Adair? Yes. All right. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff going on on the finance. I need a motion to approve items number one to seventeen, please. Motion by Chaz, second by Maria. Any questions there? Um, I was talking to Mr. Iannucci um, before the meeting and. You know, I think that most of these things are self-explanatory. Number 10 is what Dr. McCarran talked about with the, um, the corrective action plan for the one item on the audit. That's about it. Roll call. Mrs. Dare? Yes. Ms. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Buckheim? Yes. Ms. Benzarello? Yes. Ms. Baldwin? Yes. Motion passed. Under curriculum, we need to uh, approve number one, course approval for the staff members. I make motion to approve for number one. Motion made by Patty. I'll second. Second by Maria. Roll call. Mrs. Dare? Yes. Ms. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Buckheim? Yes. Ms. Benzarello? Yes. Ms. Baldwin? Yes. Motion passes. 
On their policies and public relations, we need an item, um, a motion to approve items number one and two. Number one is state mandated items. One goes along with our green initiative. Green initiative. Or her just uh, need a motion. A motion. motion. Motion made by Chaz. Second. Seconded by Patty. Do you have any questions on that? Well, real quick, the, we sent the uh, back of policy from the sustainability workshop that I went to. The stress estimate is going to uh, make it a little less cumbersome than the one they would be cumbersome. Or sort of like. sort of um, so, to make that, so you'll see that read again. So that. Okay. Any other questions? Roll call. Ms. Dare? Yes. Ms. Anderson? Yes. Ms. Mr. Buckman? Yes. Ms. Panzarello? Yes. Ms. Baldwin? Yes. Motion passes. At this time, we're open for any public comment. Does anyone have anything? Any public comments at this time? I might as well. <laughs> What's your address? Uh, Nick Capotis, 296 Sunny Road. It's a great street. Uh, um, I see you get the same crowd as we get at the council meetings. Yeah. <laughs> They're partying. This is Chris. You usually have 14 out there. You should make the students come. Right? We try and have different groups of students every, every month. month. Recognize. Yeah. You know, I, I, once again, I, I don't mean to, I'm not here to interrogate everything, but I'm here for once and I, I heard something that I wanted to ask. And, uh, I'm actually very critical of this band of when he speaks as a uh, resident of a school. Isn't that good? Not allowed to speak as a school. Official. I know that. Yeah. But it's hard to take your hat off. Yeah, but that's one of our pet peeves about being, that you have to understand that as a policy. I'm already a first. Taking that hat off is a problem that we have. So hard. So, so, you so you're here as the mayor is what you're saying. I'm here as a citizen, but I'm something because I do have my, my role as the elected official. So uh, your audit said that you had an $800,000 surplus. Correct. Uh, and I understand, I, I clearly understand how you use money. It's just a, a paper <clears> to tell money comes in. Um, the question that I had is when I first got on council, Back in those days, the school board budget went out to vote, and it would uh, get defeated pretty much every year because the people, I don't believe, understood the budget very well, and they voted it down. Kind of Not every year, but most times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the first year I was on on the council, it failed, and so did the, tri the regional failed at the same time. But one of the things that I uh, was made aware of was the surplus, and that the school boards were regulated by how much they were allowed to keep in surplus uh, in a year. And I'm under the impression it's a it's a percentage of your total budget or a, a minimum of $250,000. Mm -hmm. So when I hear $800,000, one of the things that I remember was uh, when, when the economic recession came, that the governor held up the last bit of money that was given to the schools because he evaluated the school surpluses and held back any, any school that had over the allotted, of the, the allowed amount. Is there any fear of that in the, in the future, that if schools are starting to build surplus again, that does the, does, the, does the state come back and say, well, why do you guys have all this money since I understand, and you and I are on the same page. But, you know, my philosophy is if we're going to tax the people to, to, you know, for money, I agree with you. If it's allocated for some fun, do it. I just get a little nervous when we, and you can see what the auditors are pointing out. They're pointing out that you made a little money selling food, and there's a question why are you making money selling food. So if we're sitting on $800,000, is there something we are planning to do with it? Is there any thought process? You know, uh, you know, the, the, the state is broke. You know that. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, state aid to our municipality has been cut by you know uh, 50, 60 percent. We lost from the year that I first started. So, uh, you know, school districts are in the same situation. You told me many times that you know, uh, you're not getting paid money that's owed to you. So, what does that say? Uh, so that's my question. I know that's a little bit long-winded, but. You know, uh, I think all of you know my, my feelings about what the school should be doing in the sense that I, I believe in it, that you guys have, you know, the ability and, 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 and the need to invest in this school in whatever way you guys feel, 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 feel the best way to do it. So what I'm saying is, how are we going to spend the money? So in terms of the $800,000, the $500,000, I'm not really looking at it as $800,000. That's what it is on the line. And the reason why it is that is because we weren't able to spend what was budgeted for this year. That 800000 is automatically only down to three when we budget for next year for the 500000 in projects that we weren't able to do, such as removing carpeting, updating HVAC units, and making sure that those buildings are, su are sufficient. Over the past three years, though, that money, because I have to then budget that money immediately into my next year's budget. Sure. So when I first came in, it was over $700,000 of excess surplus. Each year, we've watered that number down farther and farther to be less and less. The one issue that school districts do have, though, and Ms. Hubbard will speak to this, is that the second we receive a student, 
who needs an out of district placement or needs something, a school district needs to be able to pay that money because the state isn't going to give it to us if we don't have it in the budget. And then you're going into emergency. You're cutting down the money that you do have for the things that you have for students that are needed. So one thing that we are doing though is we're budgeting that money accordingly and we're always trying to bring that excess surplus down. Well, one of the benefits we had from our reserve accounts though, as I had said earlier, was the fact that we were able to then pay for the vendors who had done the work, even though the state hadn't paid our money. In regards to state aid payment, all school districts already don't receive their last state aid payment in June. They always push that off until the next school year in July. So school districts have to float their budget and make sure that they're able to make payroll and make sure that they're able to cover everything during that last payment. So I mean, at times with the borough, which is why I might call Rich at times and be like, Rich, when am I getting my tax levy checked? I'm like, I needed to go well, through. Let me know you got the check. So, exactly. Yeah, we we yeah, didn't yeah, get the check. We're good. We, it was wired in, so we're good to go. So we'll have a very merry Christmas. But um, I'm waiting for a T-shirt every month. <laughs> a million dollars a month, right? <laughs> exactly. But, uh, question though, the five hundred thousand wouldn't that have been an encumbered amount of money? I mean, you guys can't spend the money unless you have the money, so it's encumbered. So. Are you saying that that 800000 even though on your balance sheet is showing $800,000, you're saying that that 500000 that was spent? That 500000 would have been spent on projects, at which point we would have spent the money. We did the projects. We had, we had to the, leave it. The rock I money didn't come in. Let, let me just go back. I go back in history. Uh, and I don't mean to, like I said, this is not appropriate in my opinion at all. I can talk to all of you on an individual basis, but I got you all in the room at the same time. My experience with the school board in the past, and I haven't been paying attention at all because you guys have your own budget and you do what you want and you're under the 2%. But I know that the, the years that, in the past, the surplus never went down. You know, uh, every year I would read the Secretary of the Board of Education's report and apologize. I, I, I hope they, I read it. And I read that, that paragraph that says, you know, well, we, we didn't think we were going to have this surplus and, and we ended up with 1.2 million. And then we didn't think we were going to have this surplus and we ended up with 1.5 million. And all I'm saying is I'm very cautious that we, you know, I, I, just, I know it sounds crazy for me to say this, but uh, you know, spend the money is what I'm saying. We spend the money. That, that year, that, that's well, what you're talking about pay. pushing for your last payment. I understand last payment. But we're talking about a year when the governor did not give the last money payment. at all. And you basically said, that. you know, the, the regional high school was sitting on, if I remember, it was, uh, I want to say it was, it was two and a half or three million dollars. And when Gloucester Township, Belmar, and Rugby went to that meeting, we basically said, you, you can't raise taxes. You have to take the money out of your surplus. Does everybody remember this? And, and then that's how the tennis courts got built at Trenton High School. The baseball field got built at Red Highland. And I believe the local did what it needed to do. Because they had to budget um, the money. I'm very, I'm very happy to say that none of these fine people had to ever sit with the mayor and council after our budget was defeated like I, I did. did. So you can guarantee we won't go over 2%. So we won't be having that Absolutely. discussion. So that way we can be civil with each other. And, and, and you know what? I would support it. And I hope, I hope you guys have heard that if, they, if there's anything that the municipal government can do to help the local government. You were, you were um, a leader in trying to, we, you know, we, when we wanted to talk about you know, a new school, new, school. new facilities for right it, but you know, you, you, you know, you met with us several times. We appreciate that. Um, it's something that we would we would love, but we just can't raise the tax. You know, we can't ask you the town of Rundy to pay fourteen million dollars for a new building. And, and I understand that. And but you, you know that, and I'll make it clear, to anybody here, if they didn't know, you know, the, the municipality is willing to, you know, forego its tax increase to help the, the school board if we had to partner up to say, well, if you guys had to raise it for a certain amount of money, you know, if we had the ability. We've done very well, but we've had we have different abilities than you guys have. We can generate revenues in a different way than, than this, obviously the school board doesn't generate revenues. But you know, uh, the, the second thing that I had said earlier is, I, and I, I want you guys to do something with the schools. I, I think that anybody who doesn't realize that the schools are the most important part of our community is missing something. So I, I think that, uh, and I know that just bricks and mortar don't mean it mean as much as the teachers and the personnel, but the bricks and mortar mean something in, in this environment that you live in, and. Once again, all of I, I, and I, I brought up this earlier. I brought this question that you know we, we have no debt right now, and I say we because well, you know I'm part of this community in, in two aspects. So, and I'm not saying to go out there and try to get forty-eight million dollars. You know, I appreciate uh, Miss Larry you pointing out that my taxes would go up a uh, thousand. What was it? Yeah, she had the numbers for you. She did She's a great good. job yeah, yeah, showing me how much the taxes would go up. But you know, supporting anything you guys want to do to improve these schools. To make the, the environment better for both the personnel and the, the kids.
kids. It's, you know, and I just think that uh, that forward looking, I, I know you guys have it. Mm -hmm. We were looking at the school and, and what the, the financial situation the state, you're never, we're never going to get 50% uh, funding. We're never going to get any of that. But, you know, I mean, I see what the regional is doing, and I actually like what the regional is doing. I like that they're taking that two and a half million dollars worth of surplus that they generate every year, and they're putting it in the windows. They're putting it, it sounds like you're doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Fixing we are. And things like that. I think the only disadvantage is you're not grabbing enough money to do anything really substantial. Uh, you know, and, 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 and you know, whereas that two and a half million, does that, does that give you enough, well, regional is different than you, but you know, say 250,000 or 300,000, does that equate into you guys borrowing three or four million dollars, even if you go out to, to bond, and even if you go out to the public and say, we're gonna go out and borrow five million dollars, the tax increase is gonna go to nothing because we already have it in our budget every year. That's what I was trying to get at. And you were making a payment every year on your, on your principal and interest. Your payment ended you know, three, two or three years ago. That principal interest must still be somewhere in your budget. Can we, you know, can we grab that and go do something? Okay. Once again, this is you guys. But remember, I'm tasked with hearing from everybody saying that, you know, for some reason I'm responsible when it rained the other day. And the snow I didn't say what. Well, you know, <laughs> and so if, if, if the schools aren't doing well, somehow mayor and council are getting a little bit more. I think even the school board, for some reason, it's our responsibility that stores are empty and people maybe you know, don't want to do something. So whatever we can do, you know, we have great borrowing power too. If you guys need to borrow money to do something like that, you know that. Please we don't tell him that. that. We've already said that. <laughs> two, two comments. He's been in meetings with yeah, us. Yeah, that's two comments. One is, um, this is a tremendous board. Uh, on my, from my experience of working with these people, as well as our superintendent and the supportive administrative team. Um, Buying that large piece of property and building a whole new complex financially wasn't possible. Yeah. But we're not, we have to stop thinking. We, right. still, we still have some ideas that we're talking at at this point, and hopefully as the months and uh, the year unfolds, we may have another idea to improve our facilities, especially being them down. Number two, uh, Patty and I especially have been crazy about becoming a sustainable school district, and we're both so very happy that we're going down that direction. We need to work closely with the, with the community. Yeah. With, with you know how you got bronze right? certification yeah. with the Bayer Council. Yes, because uh, sustainability is more than cutting back on paper use and uh, <coughs> producing your electric bill. It's also building it into the curriculum and getting young people to think green, uh, so this we can save this planet, keep this planet healthy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's, it's it's a lot. So we hope you guys will continue to want to work with yeah. us in that venue as well. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. coming and speaking. Thanks, Sam. Yeah. Not thank something you. I typically like to do. Well, we thank you for attending our Yeah, thank you. Yeah. 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 Anyone else have any public comment? I think he went over his three minutes. Too. Wait, yeah. I have yeah. mine, but yeah. I have something to say. That hey, timer would have been ten minutes. I have something to say in the better <laughs> council meeting. You'll have to remind, I'll remind me. We appreciate your three minutes. Can you come back? Ms. Hubbard, Ms. Hubbard, I just wanted to thank you, too, for having that um, workshop for the members of our um, community for the anxiety workshop because I came. You did. I do yeah. not personally nor my child but I have a lot of students who suffer from um, anxiety and um, it was very meaningful and everyone had a great time and it was packed <clears throat> by the way, packed. There was a lot of people here um, because um, you know, I, I just wanted to thank you for um, for doing that. So I, I appreciate your hard work. Okay. So thank, thank you. Thank you for coming and supporting us. You're welcome. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, and with, um, no, no executive session. Um, Reorg, Thursday, January 5th. 7 o'clock, right? 7? 7? 7. 7. Seven. Missed. I told you that, right? You okay. 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 I do know that. Uh, you know, it's a different night, so um, Missy was saying, yeah, it's a Thursday. Um, Thursday, Thursday. We're going to set. Yeah, that's okay. fine. Okay. All right. So at this time, I need a motion to adjourn. I need a motion to adjourn. Motion made by Maria. Second. Patty. Patty. All in favor? <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, yes. Yes. All right. Meeting adjourned.